So basically, in terms of gender backlash, unfortunately, uh, Lebanon is governed by personal status codes that have to do with religion. And unfortunately, there are a lot of discriminatory laws against women and the areas that govern their marriage, their divorce, child custody and inheritance. So uh, there's a resistance on the part of society and the government and religious groups to change these discriminatory personal status codes, not to mention uh, laws against uh, laws that discriminate against women with regards to gender-based violence that need to be amended, uh, more laws need to take place in terms of like sexual harassment on the streets, and of course attention should be given to marginalized groups. Those groups are excluded from general debates on uh, gender rights and gender justice, and those groups need to be addressed simply because this is uh, part of the work that we're doing. Gender backlash in Kenya especially um, can be seen in different dimensions, especially when it comes to issues of legal uh, and policy frameworks. Uh, we can also look at uh, the backlash uh, with regards to sexual and gender-based violence, uh, backlash on women representation and how even as much as that is anchored within the constitution, uh, constitutional stipulations then the implementation of uh, those laws is still very wanting. And even women who want to vie for positions of power, both elective and appointive, still have it uh, very difficult to really get into those positions. One, because during electioneering period, you find that women who uh, front themselves uh, or want to stand up for positions are normally targeted specifically because of their gender. And a lot of questions are asked about who, who they are, where they're coming from, uh, a lot of histories uh, look into and a lot of times even their supporters are targeted for uh, very uh, what I would call gender specific types of violence.